Lauren Chandler was a pastor's wife and the mother of three young children. And then one day, her husband collapsed on the living room floor and the bottom fell out of her world. Lauren Chandler remembers the exact moment her life changed. Um, Matt was diagnosed with a stage three brain cancer. As I was trying to just find somewhere to just have stability, I looked through scripture in particular and found over and over again God's steadfast love to his people. In her book, Steadfast Love, Lauren shares what she uses as an anchor during times of trouble and throws us the life preserver we'll need to weather any storm. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Lauren Chandler. It's great to have you here. So glad to be here, thank you. Tell us a little bit about what happened that day in 2009. It must have been totally shocking to you. It was, I mean, it was just like any other Thanksgiving morning where I'm getting dishes ready to take over to my mom's for lunch later that day. And then all of a sudden I hear just this commotion in the room right next to me. And I walk in and I don't see Matt, but I see my three kids and I hear this, cl this clattering of our, our fireplace irons and I see on the floor Matt is his whole body shaking in the midst of a grand mal seizure. I mean, completely out of nowhere. He was wow. probably the healthiest he'd been in his, his entire life. You were told that Matt had, I mean, he went, he was diagnosed, mm -hmm. doctors looked at him with no, no previous indication of right. this, that he had a limited time to live. What was the diagnosis? Um, they, after an eight hour resection, uh, the pathology wow. came back um, as an anaplastic oligodendroglioma grade Good three, goodness. which um, when I asked the surgeon, I was like, what does this mean? Like, what is his life expectancy? And he said, it's typically two to three years. And so, I mean, that was just a kick in the gut. I here he was, just healthy and in good shape, and no prior history, no headaches even. Yeah. Um, it, but the one, the one thing that evidence of this tumor was this the seizure on wow. Thanksgiving Day. You know, we try to live in the now with the power of Christ in our lives, but yeah. when you get a diagnosis like yeah. that, and you're a young mom, mm -hmm. and you've got three little kids. You're looking down the road and I'm sure your heart is just flooded with anxiety and fear. What did you go through? Oh, it was so when they gave us the diagnosis, I was in a room with the doctor and, and one other uh, person, one of the other lead pastors at our church. Um, and I remember coming out of that room and seeing my parents, Matt's parents, our friends, the couples. And none of them knew and it. No, none of them knew. And then if, even seeing them together and, and even though, you know, life together, whatever we have left in our life is sort of an illusion. We don't know how right. long we have. It seemed like Matt and, and me, our really, our marriage had this expiration yeah. date on wow. it. And so to look at them and think, oh, I want to be like them where I, there's no expiration date on my marriage, yeah. but you can just keep living life together. So, yeah. I mean, it was hard. So what did you do during that time? I'm sure there was a, a spiritual scramble mm -hmm. for a while, mm -hmm. but then it was the word of God that brought you strength. Absolutely. Well, and I would say there was a scramble and, and that, that's what I would want to tell people who maybe are on, you know, this side of a, yeah. of a trial of a storm where they're like, am I going to be okay through the storm? Is God even who yeah, he says he is? is. He? Yeah. And I will say that I found him to be exactly who he said he would be, yeah. that he provided peace that surpassed understanding, that he was with me, that uh, the body of Christ surrounded me, and that his word was true, that I found a lot of comfort in, 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 in the word, in the Bible, uh, his promises of being with us, uh, of being our stability in yeah. times of distress, and of his steadfast love being sure and enough to to hold us in that. When did you first draw strength from Psalm 107? Well, it was actually a couple of years before um, I uh, this trial. I had a friend who said, hey, I want you to read Psalm 107. I, she was a very prophetic friend. She said, I think there's something significant here. And so I read it and it's, you know, the story of four different yeah. groups of people in different distresses in the desert, in chains, suffering from their own folly and caught in a storm. And so I remember reading through this and being able to identify with every part of it. I'd yeah. been the in the desert, I'd been in chains. And this I'd, was before your husband's yes, scenario. Yes, it was before yeah. this. So, you know, we all can, mm -hmm. can identify with this psalm. You know, the struggles in our lives all pretty much 
bring us to the point of really understanding the magnitude of God. And that was true for you, even in the midst of a terrible diagnosis. Yeah. What did God teach you? He, ta he taught me that he is exactly who he says he is and that he is enough yeah. to um, provide stability. I think that's one word. And, and even uh, in my book, there's a picture of an anchor on it. Um, just this idea of stability in uncertain times. Yeah. And, and all of our times are uncertain. We never yes. know what tomorrow is going to bring. Um, we don't know what next week has for us, but we can always trust in God's steadfast love that he showed through his son, Jesus. You know, we talked about Matt's diagnosis, but where is he at today? Pretty amazing. Uh, praise God. He is cancer free. He has been um, since, they, since the surgery. They've had no evidence of disease. Um, he has been free of any brain tumor. There have been little to no side effects. You both believed, even before that diagnosis, that God would heal him. Yes. Um, we had some friends uh, that are a little more charismatic than we are, <laughs> brothers and sisters in Christ, and so grateful for their gift yeah. to us. And uh, one man had told Matt that there would be um, a circumcision of sorts that would make him uh, the father of many sons. Wow. And you know, Matt thought it was had to do with just some reorganizing in the in the church, but really it was a literal circumcision, like a, a cut in his uh -huh. head that that he believed um, would give him a place to speak into to young men's lives, pastors' lives, and that he would survive it. Yeah. You need to read the whole story. It's in Lauren's book, and it's called Steadfast Love. It'll build your faith. It's available where books are sold. Thank you so much Thank for being for with us today. Me. It's a wonderful story of a God who never changes.